Hi everybody, this is Prasad Mainam Pati. Today, we are going to look at Oracle Database Architecture. The basic understanding about architecture. What do we mean by architecture? Architecture that is which outlines the mechanics and features of Oracle Server, which contains Oracle Database and Oracle Instance at high level. So, when we are talking about architecture, architecture is the combination of hardware and software which is completely relied. One, uh, one is dependent on the other one. Without software, there is no use of hardware. Without hardware, there is no use of software. And these two has to work together in order to have a particular piece of software to work at its maximum extent. And main components of architecture with respect to Oracle Server. Talking about Oracle Server, one technical term we generally use is Oracle Database. And Oracle Database is a completely based on the storage level component, which means the combination of different types of files together becomes Oracle Database where we store all the required information for retrieval purpose. There is one more important term which we hear is Oracle Instance. <coughs> there is a difference between Oracle Database and Oracle Instance. What do we mean by Oracle Instance? Oracle Instance is nothing but the combination of memory structures and processes at operating system level. Now, we talked about two different things. One is Oracle Database. The other one is Oracle Instance. Oracle Database is completely based on the storage which demands more and more space. Whereas Oracle Instance is majorly relied on a memory structure along with some background processes at voice level which will support the operations to the Oracle Database. And when we are talking about Oracle Database, right now we understand it is uh, basically at storage level and uh, it is going to have three different types of files. There are, there, there are going to be many files but if you look at the type of the file we can segregate into three different types when we are talking about Oracle Database. <coughs> the first one is control files, redo lock files and data files. Oracle is really great at naming things basically. If you really pay attention to the name, it has a lot of meaning in the file name itself. As it's saying, control files, the control files are the files holding the control information about the database. It's basically a physical structure of the database is going to be stored in the control file. Redo log files are the files used during the recovery period. Then what is that? In case of loss, when we need to redo the transaction, as name says redo, these are the files will come in handy in recovery process. For example, last night I took my database backup and this morning I started entering the information after a while and then the entire database got crashed. We lost all the files for some reason. Then there is a mechanism is put in place by Oracle Corporation, the information that is available in redo log files can be captured as a physical file which is called Oracle log files. Those files really come in handy in case of loss of any database related files. With the help of those, we can really redo all the transactions that are happened since last night backup. So that we are going to see in detail in backup recovery classes. And the third type is the data files. The files that supports the actual storage of the data for an application. Like if you have employee table, it's going to store employee table structure as well as data for retrieval purpose. So what is our understanding? We have three different types of files as far as Oracle database concerned. One is control file which is going to keep the control information about the database which is nothing but a physical structure of a database. 
and uh, read log files are the files which is going to support the recovery process by keeping track of all the changes that are happening to the database like by using DML or DDL transactions all those all those entries must put in into the read log files for recovery purpose itself data files are the files which we use to store all the application related data let's look at other important files apart from the CRD files in a database environment we can have parameter file where we mention configuration details how much our instance supposed to be and then we didn't talk about how what is an instance and all that so basically uh, we can think like a parameter file is a configuration file for an instance and to a database too because anything and everything end of the day it's going to belong to a database instance is the component which is supporting all the database operations okay and there is another file called password file again as name says this is a password file password file for whom the people who are trying to connect to a database from a remote location basically they have to connect to the network from the network if they wanted to connect to a database as a sysdba which is a highly privileged user in order to perform any backup recoveries and stuff like that so we have to have the password file definitely we are going to look into these files in detail going forward elect log file which is very critical file which is a kind of keeping track of what's going on in the database with respect to any issues like any 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 issues that are happening to the database any problems or any activities major activities like you are adding some data files or there are some errors which are popping up because of some kind of transactions maybe the space is not sufficient and all those details are going to put in the in a alert log file as again name says alert log file this is an alert file where dba has to look at it, this file day to day basis and what we used to do in production environments we used to keep a kind of scripting shell script as and when we see any entry that we need our attention dbs attention like aura hyphen that's how oracle is going to put any errors into alert log file aura hyphen some number then anytime it, it grabs from that file or a hyphen then it's going to send a message and then back up that file to different location so definitely we'll be talking about these alert log files and trace files trace files basically if a user is working on a SQL statement if he wants to trace it or maybe there's a background process which it's it uh, you know uh, it wants to give you some kind of information to a DBA and all this is going to be part of the trace files and alert log files as we discussed just before uh, when online read log files there is a switching mechanism which we are going to see during that period you, there is a mechanism you can capture the information from read log files and save it as a file on a file system for future usage basically for this or for a recovery purpose and backup files and so on and so forth and we will be looking at all these files in detail going forward majorly when we say database we call control file read log file and data file these are all the small small files which are going to support for different purposes okay most critical files among all these all are important for that matter so every file is having its own role parameter file is the configuration part password file is facilitating to connect to the database as is dba from network and alert log files trace files informational files and arc log files which are going to support a recovery process and backup files definitely as yes. when you backup database those files are going to be different than your arc log files so basically what we do is we restore the backup in case of loss and then apply all the changes on top of the backup file in order to get to up to the point the most important file is a control file this is a kind of a first database file comes into the picture while the database is coming up now as we see this control file is a critical file while it is coming up because it is 
holding all the structural information. What do we mean by structural information? All the details about data files and all the details along with the checkpoint information in order to ensure the consistency between the information that is there in the control file and the consistent uh, between uh, information on the control file and from the data file headers. So, since this is so important, so Oracle strongly recommends to do the multiplexing in order to protect from the failures. What do we mean by multiplexing? Multiplexing is nothing but we are trying to keep multiple copies of this file on different disks so that in case of one failure you have another one to build the last one. So having multiple files, the same files basically. So Oracle has to manage and maintain all the files that are participating in the multiplexing. And how many files we can have it? Oracle supports up to up to eight files. You can have eight similar files for a given database. Well, talking about control file, what is going to contain in the control file? Basically, what is the database name and what is the database ID? When this database has been created, timestamp of it, and all the data files, like you know, what are all the read log files, what are all the data files associated with this particular database and the location of each and every data file what is the age of each and every file which is a checkpoint one we just discussed because checkpoint information is going to be available in the control file as well as on the each and every database file header so it, the cross verification goes on while coming up the database while database is up and running oracle maintains during the checkpoints which we are going to see in a minute so checkpoint is very critical information as far as recovery concern so what are the current online sequence number and then each read log file will have a sequence because it works in a cyclic fashion okay checkpoint number backup information pretty much you know the critical information about a particular database is going to be part of the control file all right so that's pretty much about for this session and we'll continue in the coming session thank you very much bye now